Well, sorry about that. I guess my, my video cut off on me, so this will be part two. Uh, part two, I got interrupted. Um, so continuing, what Jesus tells us, is, or what we know about Jesus, is that Jesus came to bring Jews and Gentiles together into his kingdom, and his kingdom is the church. The church that he has established and that he has begun by his own death and by his own resurrection. Clues were given in the Old Testament that the Gentiles would be part of the Messianic kingdom. However, this mystery was not fully revealed until the New Testament. And, and premillennialists want to argue that, oh, well, nothing about the church and so on and so forth was prophesied in the Bible. That's not true. All of these prophecies we see in the Old Testament about the kingdom of the Christ and Messiah is fulfilled in the church and is shown to be the kingdom of Christ. Look, um, big letter A here on page 27. From what Old Testament prophet did James quote to prove the Gentiles are now part of God's people? In Acts chapter 15, well, he quoted from Amos. He quoted from the prophet Amos. Amos to show and to prove that Gentiles are welcomed by God into the kingdom of heaven, the body of Christ, the church. Was this a new part of the plan? Excuse me. Was this a new part of the plan of God? Again, premillennialism wants to say that, you know, God's plan was interrupted or rejected by the Jews, and so God couldn't establish it, couldn't fulfill it, couldn't make it happen until a later date. But that is not true. That is not what is seen in God's word. And, and this idea of the church and the Gentiles is not some new part of God's plan. It was what God's plan was all about, about bringing Israel, or the Jews and Gentiles together, as James tells us in Acts 15. Remember, we pre-prophesied from that, or prophesied from Amos, and he says that this was God's plan all along, his eternal plan. It was not a new part of his plan. As a matter of fact, continuing, what Old Testament prophet prophesied of the Gentiles being a part of God's people? Well, in Romans 9, that's where Paul talks about that, and Paul gives a prophecy from Hosea. Hosea prophesied about the Gentiles being a part of God's people, his kingdom, the body of Christ, the church. And then finally, question number 12, how long was the church in the plan of God? Does it have a secondary importance? Well, according to Ephesians 3, 10 and 11, if we'll turn there together in Ephesians 3, 10 and 11, it says there, Paul the apostle says, so that through the church... The manifold wisdom of God might now be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly places. This was according to the eternal purpose that he has re realized in Christ Jesus our Lord. Paul says this was the eternal purpose of God, bringing in the church, the kingdom of Christ. God's plan was not changed. God did not fail. It was not interrupted. It was not altered. God didn't go to plan B. This was his plan all along. His plan was for Jesus to come and to die and to bring all people, Jews and Gentiles, together by his death and resurrection, by his blood and power, to bring us together and hit into his kingdom. The kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of Christ is now. It is, it is happening now. It has already been happening. It happened once Jesus raised from the dead. It is not a kingdom that is going to come later and be established on this earth. Not according to what we find in scripture. Jesus came and did exactly what he meant to. And Jesus was successful in bringing about his kingdom. And Christians today who follow the truth of his word are citizens of his kingdom now, his church, and will one day get to be with him in heaven for eternity. And so I think the scriptures and that we looked at this morning that it was prophesied about and that Jesus came, Jesus came to, to establish his kingdom. And it, it is a spiritual kingdom, not a physical one on earth but one that is eternal in the heavens. 
And so we see that Jesus did begin his kingdom. He established his kingdom. And that it is he is on he is on his throne still reigning. As a matter of fact, we can even go to 1 Corinthians 15, which tells us that Jesus is going to reign as king. There is reigning as king now, but that he is going to reign as king until the end. And when the end comes, he's going to hand the kingdom over to the Father. Jesus is reigning now, not later. He will reign until God brings this world to an end, and then Jesus and you and I will all submit ourselves to the Father in heaven and be with God in heaven forever. And again, a reference for that is 1 Corinthians 15. And you can check that out. All right. Well, I hope that this has been helpful this morning. Uh, that completes Lesson 6. Um, and so if you have any questions, any comments, um, again, if you want to interact, um, have some interaction. I know, uh, you know we're not able to be together. You know, people can't uh, you know, raise their hand and ask questions. But if you'll leave questions, um, if you'll leave a comment or you'll send me a message or whatever helps, um, we can talk about things and we can communicate that way. Um, so next week, Lord willing, next Sunday, we will be on Lesson 7, and we'll, we're going to talk about the rapture. Um, and we're going to talk about the rapture and what the rapture is, what the rapture isn't. Uh, we're going to find out whether there is going to be a rapture, as so many claim, as premillennialism claims. And so next Sunday, we'll look more closely at the rapture and, and see what God's Word says about it or doesn't say about it. And so we'll look at that then. I look forward to seeing you then, Lord willing. Um, so take care, God bless, and we'll talk to you soon.